whether it's for a movement like this or the hidden hand punch, how your body here, like I rotate here, like this, and the body folds down. Body, and I, I turn that, oh. then, then it's very, came to the surface and I apply that force. Thanks for helping me. We're gonna to discuss today, what's the difference between Chen Tai Chi, Yang Tai Chi, and what is this thing that's called Silk Reeling Force, Silk Reeling Jin, and what does that have to do with everything, okay? So let's start with the Chen Tai Chi. So Silk Reeling Force is a method of everything in Chen Tai Chi. It's how they generate their movement, generate their force, coordinate their body, how they affect their opponents and partners. So it's, it's everything. So if you've done Chen Tai Chi at all, you, you know it's how the body spirals whether it's for a movement like this or the hidden hand punch, how your body winds, everything coils and then winds into the punch. So they use that to generate force. I'm not gonna hit you with any of that. <laughs> but um, that's the essence of Chen Tai Chi. And you'll notice if you look at Chen Tai Chi, the way they do their movements and compared to the way the Yang Tai Chi does their movements, that Yang Tai Chi has a lot less coiling. So does that mean that Yang Tai Chi no longer does silk reeling? Uh, it's, no, that's not true. It's no longer the emphasis of everything in Yang Tai Chi, but it still exists. And we're going to explore exactly what I mean by that. So, as I was saying, the, in Chen Tai Chi, the silk reeling is both how you generate power, and you can imagine it wouldn't be pleasant to be hit by that. And it's also how you affect your opponent. So they use this, these kind of twisting. Suppose, let's suppose he pushes me, like he's got some pressure. Let's just use his one arm so they can see. So here, this is, there's this pressure right here, and I just want to push your arm off. That's, that's kind of poor leverage, you see? But if, if I use both hands, that's still not that good. But if I apply the power in a spiraling manner, right away you lose the balance. What did that feel like? Oh, it felt, uh, it felt like my muscle and the tendon just turned immediately. So anatomically speaking, it's just it's Yeah, anatomically it's unpleasant, right? Adjust. So in everything I do, let's say we do a single push hand, you push into this hand, okay. right? Push. And we neutralize like this. Mm -hmm. When you apply the silk really, as you, I, I apply a force like this, he, mm -hmm. and then see his body will fold over very, mm -hmm. very quickly. Mm -hmm. If I have a t bigger motion, it would be more mm -hmm. time and effort mm -hmm. by pushing to me, mm -hmm. see, this tight spiral, mm -hmm. right away the body rolls over just by guiding that. So that's what I did when you push me here, mm -hmm. is that I guide this rotation here, I guide rotation here, like this and the body folds down yeah. immediately. So that's where the silk reeling is affecting them. And so why is it called silk reeling if I'm not twisting a lot? If I'm not twisting a lot, why is it called silk reeling? Do you want to take a guess? No, I don't know. You don't? <laughs> Let me pick your mics. The, so the, the riddle is really who is the silk, who is the silk cocoon? It's called silk reeling because when you make silk, you have a, um, a silkworm, they make a cocoon. And when you pull the silk off of them, you're, you're pulling it off like a spindle and you're you don't, you're gonna pull in a smooth spiraling way so it doesn't rip the silk, right? And so when we use it on somebody, if I'm, if I'm spinning myself like a cocoon, that's one thing. But if I'm moving him, he's a cocoon. So that's to say, stand still, don't let me move you. Okay. So he's solid right here. Mm -hmm. Now, so he's solid, he's anchored. He's using his bones and joints and stuff to be really strong and mm -hmm. solid. Mm -hmm. But if I turn him into a cocoon, I find the threads on his body and I, I turn that, oh. then, then it's very easy to move him. And actually, the more you resist me moving you, the more dramatically you'll fall, mm -hmm. um, you'll spin. So I'm finding the weights on his surface, the, the threads to pull to unravel your alignment and, and spin you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And you can do that in a whole different number of ways in, in Chen Tai Chi and in other practices. So that's silk reeling in which you are the cocoon. And along with our other analogies, cocoons, um, so we're just working with the silk on the surface. We don't care about the caterpillar. Um, silkworm inside. We just want to pull the threads on the surface. Mm. So we come to Yang Tai Chi. We still keep, we still keep the quality of interacting with the threads on the surface, the threads on the surface, and and that's where the energy of um, Tai plucking, like you see in single whip, and Lie, like a uh, splitting, which you see in wild horse parts main and other things. That's where they come in. So what I mean is, stand strong again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he didn't let me move him <clears throat> like this, right? Mm -hmm. So. He's using his alignment, he's using his arm, his bones, his mm -hmm. joints, he's bracing to the ground, right? Mm -hmm. So he's got his joints. When I use Tai, when I do this, I'm pulling his awareness to his skin. So now he already feels weird, different mm -hmm. and weird. Mm -hmm. I'm, making, I'm making him change his game, game plan. Instead of using his joints and the structure, suddenly I change the battlefield to his skin and he's off balance already, just like that. He, um, and so plucking forces his awareness to where he's unfamiliar. So if we were 
battling. If I can choose what we battle, you know, like in an old fashioned duel, like, okay, you choose a weapon, I choose a place. That's kind of like what they say, right? So there's an advantage of choosing the weapon. There's an advantage of choosing the, the place. We're gonna choose both. So with the place of battle is 10 strong, it's gonna be on the surface. Don't let me push you. So he, he's solidly strong right here, right? I pull him to the surface and he's off balance. It's easy to move him once I change the battleground to something subtly different and hard to deal with. I choose a weapon too. He chose power. He chose power. I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose spiraling force. I'll apply it along the surface of his body. What do I mean by that? That's what the splitting is, is that I'm gonna apply the force not into his body. Um, stand strong, go, go like this. So yeah, don't let me push you. If I push into him sideways with my arm, see that's very, very difficult. And so going into him, I'm gonna apply force along his surface, along the silk, like this. So, so that makes it hard for him to maintain his balance. That's like what I did too when I was twisting his arm earlier, is I'm applying the force along his first surface. So that force applied to the surface um, is like the silk reeling we discussed earlier, but in Yang Taiji, we call that the energy of, of splitting. So punch me for a second. So your arm is here. Mm -hmm. Whether I did it to your body or I do it to your arm, see? If I force your arm, I could try and lever, but mm -hmm. when I apply it to a surface like this, see? We get a, a better effect. Mm -hmm. So I can apply it to the arm, to the body, to your leg or whatever the case may be. We apply the force along the surface. If we do roll back, so he pushes into me here. And push into here, and we do a, a roll back like this. If I yank his arm and he's resisting me, that's kind of unpleasant. But if I can go, glide along his surface, I could pluck him to the surface and uh, apply that force. What does that feel like? Uh, it feels like my whole body's lifted and moved. Yeah, you feel so like your my whole center body. of gravity goes off. And that's right. I'm on my toes. Yeah, the observing while your center of gravity is really good. So we're going to apply the force just like that. And so, um, in every element, so um, you studied like a, a different Kung Fu style before, mm -hmm. right? So once with a lot of swinging and stuff like that. So yes. sh sh do one that you like. Yeah, so he does his swing. So that first part should have blocked my arm, right? You're gonna push me aside, mm -hmm. right? And then, so I'm gonna do it to you, stand strong. Okay. So if you stand really strong, it's mm -hmm. hard for me to get past this and get this hit, right? Mm -hmm. So force on force is not efficient. If I apply splitting from here, I apply this force, see, right away he's off balance. What, <clears throat> give me ready? See, this is strong like this, but see, like this, you're off balance. What did that feel like? Um, it felt like I lost control of my arm. Yeah. So when my arm moved, my whole body moved with it and I uh, became vulnerable. Yeah, so that's because I found the threads of his silk cocoon. So from his hands is up, it's strong, right? Mm -hmm. I found the thread, I plugged the thread, his whole body turns. And so my follow up is gonna land very, very nicely, mm -hmm. just like that. Um, and so you wanna have that quality and so how do you become aware of these silk reeling threads that are on us? We do a practice called mo, which is translated as like rubbing or grinding. I don't like the term grinding because it implies you're doing it very heavily, but it's actually pretty light. So when we do basic push hands, you mm -hmm. push into me. Mm -hmm. This is just making circles, but actually in every little motion, when I go from here mm -hmm. to here, there's a, a sense of rubbing. Uh, on his skin, when I feel that, allows me to gain awareness of the silk threads, as, they, as they're called, or that forms the silk reeling. So let's push again. Mm -hmm. Don't let me move you aside. So see, then well, I'm really having to muscle this to make this happen, right? Mm -hmm. But when I find that feeling, I could l easily move him aside. See, I find the rubbing and I apply the silk reeling. Here too, don't let me move you. So he, he's resisting me here. Mm -hmm. But if I find it here, I plug, see, then it's easy for movement. Mm -hmm. His whole balance is compromised. Mm -hmm. So here, push me, so he's solid here, but as soon as I do the rubbing, his balance is off. You can mm -hmm. feel that. And once I do here, it's even more off. Mm -hmm. So when you apply the silk reeling, the effect of your internal power being applied to them is amplified mm -hmm. because you're attacking them where they're vulnerable. You're drawing them to a battleground, to the surface where they're unfamiliar and unable to use their full strength of their joints and their muscle and their body weight. So in that way, it's very, very advantageous. Um, and it's not just on offense. Let's say, let's say you, you lock me down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now he's got me on this situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's trying to twist my arm. So mm -hmm. in the twisting, there's some rubbing there. Mm -hmm. He's already rubbing for me. Mm -hmm. So from that, I gain a, a sequence. I could turn this and the posture, you know, you're, the same thing, you float mm -hmm. up and you can't maintain your posture and we can do something else. So whether you're on the defensive side or on the offensive side, you use these qualities. And it's trained by the practice of rubbing in our cushion. How to be aware of, of the slight movements on the surface, this little, little bit right here, how that gives you awareness 
along their whole body so you could take their center, control their center in a way that they cannot uh, easily defend. How do you have this kind of effect on people? Okay, so that's our discussion on Chen versus Yang Xiao Tai Chi, where they differ, but where they're still the same, where this quality of silk drilling is preserved in Yang Tai Chi, in plucking and in splitting. Do you have any questions? No questions, Mr. Okay, Chester. fantastic. All right, thanks for helping me demonstrate. Thanks for watching. Thank you.